everybody um, this my name is Jen Jenkins from origin fibers and this is our third episode our third week of recording um, I talk about knitting spinning um, crocheting sometimes weaving it just depends on what I'm doing that week um, and so uh, today we're doing something a little bit different I'm doing this uh, episode at my sister's house um, my twin sister we're identical and we're gonna talk we're both gonna talk about things we've been working on uh, she's not a fiber artist, but she does some other things that have to do with fiber or have to do with gardening or farming. So we're going to include that as well this week. We already recorded this once a little bit in the front, but it was a little bit too loud. We're right by a road, so the um, the cars were kind of loud and the trucks, so we moved to the back. So this is our second take. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to start by introducing Jess and she's going to talk about some of the things that she does and who she has with her today. And then we're going to go ahead and get started with the knitting and other things that we're going to talk about today. So go ahead, Jessica. Hi, I'm Jessica Stone Cipher. And as Jennifer said, I'm her twin sister. Um, I am more interested in, um, education and animals. Um, and so my focus is being an ag teacher at a local school district and then I also um, have rabbits at home these are this is um, Neville he's a Angora rabbit and he's one of the babies that we had this year we'll talk a little bit more about him here in a little bit um, I also have some other animals a couple horses uh, rab or, yeah, rabbits chickens and uh, a couple dogs um, and a, uh, a barn cat um, uh, behind me, you would usually see our horses, but they're at the, in my parents' house right now getting some time on um, some more lush pasture and also to give my pasture a little bit of a break. Um, and then I'm also United Methodist Deacon, which means that I am ordained and serve um, in extension ministry. And so our bishop has appointed me as an ag instructor. So that's my primary role in the church is to um, do that work and connect the church in the world. And then I also support a local pastor here in various capacities. So awesome. It's my life. Okay. Very cool. Um, so I just want to um, start out, I guess, with finished objects. We both have things that we want to share this week. Um, and we'll probably do this from time to time, get together and do episodes together because that's kind of fun. Um, and we do have another sister. Um, she's our younger sister. She just turned 28. Uh, we're 32 so there's a little bit of a difference in age but we all kind of look and sound the same um so i don't know it'd be fun to have her on sometime too so we'll see um so i'm gonna start with my first finished object it's a pair of socks and i showed the progress of them last week i had one sock almost done um this is s'mores on the campfire by rye flower knits r-h-y flower knits this was a test knit um, and it was really, really fun. It has cables and lace, and it's hard to see that probably with this uh, really crazy yarn, but I really like how they turned out. I don't have any socks that are like this, and so they'll be really fun to wear um, when fall or winter comes around. And I like them because you had to pay attention to what you were doing, but they weren't hard. So if you've done cables before, if you've knit a sock before, this could be something that you could definitely accomplish. So. This was a whole lot of fun. Um, I did this with stitched together yarns um, and it looks like um, they're out of Iowa. And this is the LYS colorway. Um, I believe this was from last year for 614 Knit Studio, which is in Columbus. I'm not sure if they distributed the, this at other stores, um, but I found that there in the fall. So I've had this yarn for a little while and I'm glad I got to finally put it to use. So really fun socks. Jess, why don't you go ahead and talk about something you've been working on? Yeah, so first I think I'm gonna share um, my fiber. I was gonna share something else first, but I think I'm gonna go with this because um, in case Neville gets a little too excited and we have to pause and move him back to his cage, um, I figured I'd start with him. So Neville is a satin Angora and there are several other different types of Angora breeds. There's um, English Angora, German Angora, 
and, and a few others, but satin are the softest. And um, so I aren't got they, a, Aren't they the biggest too? Mm, They're big, they get big. This they is are a baby. Big rabbits. I'm so not sure. I'm not, I'm not certain on they, that. They get quite large. You wouldn't expect it. Yeah, they get pretty big. And, but part of why they get look big is because they're very fluffy. So um, you can see his fluff and he is ready to be um, plucked. So you can see all the fiber coming off of him that way. And then you can, um, and he's a baby. So his, his fiber um, will continue to be a little bit different as he gets older, but there's a little crimp in that. Um, my older rabbits tend to have more crimp than he does. And this is really cool. Let me hold it up again. I don't know if you can see this, but the tip, oops, there we go. The tip is like the brown or the red color, and then mm -hmm. there's like white underneath of it. So this would make yeah. something that's really interesting to um, spin. Um, and with Angora fiber, it's a lot, I would say it's a lot like alpaca because it doesn't hold its shape very well. <laughs> the cat's here. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't hold its shape very well. Um, it's drapey. It's really, really warm like alpaca. And so typically it's spun and it's very fine. So typically it's spun with something else. Um, I have seven Shetland sheep. And so um, I uh, have been combining it with that and spinning it together and trying new things with that. So um, that's what we're using the fiber for mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And they do have rings. Like if you look, I'm not sure if I can get a good picture of it. That's really cool. There's rings on his coloring. Yeah, you can see it. Which is really neat. Um, and I know my son will watch this, so I should mention he renamed Neville Debbie. But Deb so Debbie is a boy. Debbie is a boy. Um, and I still call him Neville because all of my Angoras have Harry Potter character names. So I want to show you another sample of fiber that I just harvested last night. And this is from a rabbit named Harry. And this is actually from the father of Neville. And so Harry um, has a chocolate um, like look to him on the outside. And, and then, you know, when you look closer in his fiber, it's like a pretty gray color. And so you can definitely see that almost crimp. White. I don't know if you can see the crimp, but it's really cool. Yeah, Oops. it's very pretty. Yeah. And, and it feels like clouds when mm -hmm. you put your hand in the bag. I mean, you can't even really feel it. So yeah, um, I am, I give my fiber to Jen because I'm not the type that um, spins. I simply love rabbits. So I enjoy them and take care of them. And then Jen is the lucky recipient of their fiber. Every, uh, about three months, you, they will be ready for plucking. And, and it's not, I, there are some people that worry that we are um, harming the animal, animal by doing this, but if we, you know, they, it comes out anyway, they pluck it themselves. Mm -hmm. So we are simply doing what they naturally do. And um, so some people will spin right off the rabbit and just pull it and spin. And I, I tend, I prefer to um, shave it. It just goes faster. Mm -hmm. But some people are like using pluckers, clippers. Or using use clippers. clippers. Yep. Yep. Um, so there's a there are some different ways to do that. One of the challenges with these rabbits, and I've got one right here, is matting. And so they do they do mat, and you have to keep on top of it. For Christmas, I got a blower, um, kind of like a hair you know a hair dryer, a hair blower, for for dogs. And so I'm going to start using that <clears throat> on a regular basis to keep them from matting. So that's one of my finished projects. Uh, well, I guess it's not completely finished. I have about, I don't know, four more rabbits to mm -hmm. to shear, but um, they'll yep. be happy campers because it's been hot. Yeah, and I'll be a happy camper too. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Um, I'm going to talk about my second finished object. It is a, a pair, another pair of socks. I guess it was a sock week. Um, and the cat is on my lap right now. So we may, you may get to see Moses. Um, so these were actually uh, made from sock tubes that I got off of Etsy from Sundial Designs. It is the colorway number five. I'm not sure if you can buy this anymore. I don't know how many she had, but I got this quite a while ago and it's been in my stash. It came with two mini skeins. I used one of the mini skeins for the toe and um, the cuff. But then I wanted to keep the other mini skein and save it. And I had this leftover from my shawl last week. So I just used that, trying to use up some um, scrap yarn. And then I got to keep the mini for something else, like a blanket or something. So um, 
they're fun. Sock tubes are really easy and not super, super fast, but a lot faster than knitting a full pair of socks. So um, yeah, that's what I have for that. I'm gonna see if I have anything else I have to include. Nope, that's it. You wanna talk about your beekeeping? Yeah, so I do a little bit of beekeeping and I'm very new to it. Um, so I'm not an expert. So I'm, I'm, if, if you have questions, I may not be able to answer them. So I just wanna apologize in advance about that. But I am learning as I go. We, I beekeep a little bit at my parents' farm and then I also do it um, at school with the kids. And we're learning there as well. And it's a learning curve to get, you know, 20 some kids in a bee yard. So anyway, this year, um, during the whole coronavirus stuff, I was posting videos and showing the kids, you know, some of the things that, that I was doing. And one of those things was harvesting um, honey, which I can, I can show you next time that I'm here. But this is the beeswax that I got, which is pretty nice. It's it a pretty color. really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it was quite a process. I had to boil it in water several times and then you skim off the impurities um, and you also that you can see impurities on the back you have to scrape those off as well so that took you know several times of um, melting and scraping but I think it turned out pretty well and I can't wait to show the kids in person They've, a lot of them have seen it online but I've not seen it in person so what are you gonna use that for do you know well one of the things I've used it for is soap yeah um, and so I did my first round of making soap and now there's rabbit hair on it, mm -hmm. but, um, it, I use several different types of oils to make this palm oil, olive oil, um, coconut oil. There's a bunch of different oils that went in this recipe and, um, included the beeswax and a little bit of honey. You can't put much of those things in, but I did put that in and, um, I do, you know, there is a learning, a learning curve to this and those of you that, Rats Let me running see. away. Those of you that make soap, you may be able to help me with this. Um, and I think I know what the problem is, but there's a little bit of um, like a more white texture on the front. And I started by using less sophisticated tools. So I used a hand whisk instead of one of those fancy um, blenders, the hand blenders. And I think that's the problem. I don't think it got to where it needed to be completely. So anyway, in about two weeks, We'll be able to try it, see what we think, and then we may be making this in the classroom. It was pretty easy. Awesome. Yeah, I'm <clears> excited. <throat> she gave me two bars, um, so I'm excited to try it. It, smells, it has patchouli in it, so it smells really good. Yep. And so that'll be nice. I love bar, like handmade bar soap. Yeah. I actually, I actually just ordered some tough ones. I saw their, um, and I've told you about tough before. They're mm -hmm. the, they're out of Ohio, and they make soap. Um, they make wool wash bars, and they make soap out of lanolin. And they had something, um, they had an online store kind of update for um, SSK, which is a, usually it's a retreat for knitters that the knit girls do every year, but this year it's canceled. So there's a, if you're looking for some interesting things and want to support people in the fiber industry, um, check those videos out. They are on YouTube. I, be, I believe they're like 15 minutes each. I purchased things from two different vendors. I wasn't even a part of SSK, but there was some really cool stuff. So That's cool. Yeah. And I'm excited for some new soap. Yeah. So we, well, I installed some new bees this year at the school um, and actually had we had some bees make it, but we installed some new ones. And so as part of that, um, this is the queen cage. And so there's a queen that lives in there and um, they basically get used to her scent with her being in that cage. And then um, there's like a sugar plug in there and they eat their way in and she eats her way out and they help her help her get out. But I thought it was cool. They made, um, you know, some of their, their work around it. They're out of beeswax, so I like to save things like this. It's really cool to show the kids um, at school. But I think it's doesn't matter how old you are. I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, this was more te. This is pretty tedious, but this is called propolis. Some of you may have heard of propolis. I have before. no idea what this is. So propolis is the glue that <coughs> holds things together inside the hive. So bees will um, take. Um, they'll scat. You know, they're scavengers in in many ways, but. They'll, they'll take some sap and different things from trees and then some of the other things that come out of their body naturally and they'll make this, this glue and it holds the, um, the boxes together. So it, I don't, if you've never 
been a beekeeper before, never, you know, opened up a box before, if you have them stap stacked on top of each other, they, there's nothing really holding them together other than maybe a brick or something on top. Hmm. There's no latch that holds that so together. So it's just the weight of the brick. Yes. Right? Okay. So if there were to be a big wind and it were to fall over, um, it would just fall apart. And so what bees do is they glue it together themselves. That's cool. And it's really, really strong stuff. It smells really interesting. Yeah. It's a... Yeah, it's yeah. got a... It's like a... And it's like a greenish greenish color to what it. do you use it for can you use it for anything yeah. so you can make tinctures out of this oh it's cool use a lot as like natural medicine i'm not a doctor so i'm not recommending you do this um i'm not saying it's bad or good but this is what people use to or do to to make things out of it they make tinctures um they put it on food and hmm. just eat it as is um i've heard of cancer patients utilizing it um the tinctures you can use for like if you get a scrape and it's supposed to have antimicrobial property so that's cool yeah I, I try to save that, and there's other ways. <laughs> He's looking at the, looking at you guys. He's looking at the um, tripod. There's other ways to encourage more propolis um, um, deposit, and you can, I actually bought a propolis. It's like a thing that they, there's holes on the top of it, and they fill in all the holes, and then, got hair on me. Um, <laughs> and then you basically, you could put it in the freezer, and you snap it, and it all kind of falls off. And oh, cool. Can, so I'm working on... On some new things with the beehives. And that's awesome. I wanted to show you some of my harvests. Cool. Um, so that's all we have for things that are finished. Um, works in progress, things that I've been working on. I have a few things to mention. What is that sound? It's Moses. The cat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is exactly, but he's doing something. I have a um, another test knit, and I asked the um, designer if I could share this. And I have, this is only in black and white, so it's cute though. It is really cool. So this is Snug by Kira Wharton. And it's a really big worsted weight shawl. So I started it on Sunday and I'm almost, today's Thursday, I'm almost finished. I did, um, so I'm not gonna give away the whole pattern, but the cool thing is, um, you can see here, you can, it's basically just repeat. So it's a lace section. And then this is mosaic knitting. So it's not color work. It's really, really easy and relaxing to do it. Slip stitches. Um, the cool thing is if you want to make this bigger, you just add more repeats of the lace and then this um, mosaic section. So that's what I did. So that's the reason why I ran out of yarn. Um, and I just ordered, um, there was one more skein left of the color that I needed on the website. So I got that, I ordered it last night. Um, I used wandering wool, and this is what is recommended for the pattern. I typically don't use what's recommended for patterns. Um, I always substitute something, but I wanted to order this yarn. It was decently priced um, for a hand-dyed yarn. And um, so this is super wash merino, 100%. I have two colorways that I used. So let me just grab this out of the bag. Okay. So I have Neptune, which is this really pretty teal color. And then I have, what's the other color? Neptune and gray matter, if you can see mm. that. And this is this really pretty gray color. I like that. I do too. It actually turned out really cool. So mm -hmm. I have this on a 50 inch cable. Let's try not to pull it off the needles. Mm -hmm. So you can't, it's not blocked yet. So you can't see everything super well, but you can see I've done an extra repeat and then I'm finishing the border. So you, you do two repeats of this panel here to finish the border. So I just have to have, I have a little bit left of the blue and I have a whole bunch, I have a whole nother skein of the gray. So I'm gonna be just fine finishing this once I get that blue in the mail. Um, like I said, it's been a really nice fun knit. I know it, it's gonna be big because since it's super wash, when you wash super wash, it gets bigger. Hmm. And superwash means that you can wash it in the washing machine. I hardly ever do that. Sometimes I do it with socks, but I know that's probably not the best idea. So this will be hand washed and then blocked next week once I finish it. So I'm really excited. Um, I had a really good experience with it. And um, I'm going to see if I, I don't know if I write or wrote out when it comes out. No, I don't know when this is going to be released. I know the... Um, the deadline for the test is at the beginning of August, um, but it's been really nice and it's uh, written out two ways. You can do it either with the written out version and then there's also a chart. 
and I use the chart. The charts for me are a lot easier. I've said that before because um, it's vi it's basically for visual learners um, and I work better that way. So that's how I did with this and I'm excited to finish it. It'll be done next week. So it's really fun. It was a really quick knit. So <laughs> he's playing with a, what is that? What it's is a rock. Rock. The cat's playing with a rock <laughs> behind us. What else do you do when you're a barn cat? You That's find right. stuff to do during the day. That's right. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about this? Yeah. Okay. So um, I've created some gardens. I don't know, can you see it behind us? No. no. Okay. <laughs> so they're raised beds. and We um, can take footage of it maybe. Yeah, maybe for the intro. So I've finally got them done. I've, you know, in, my, in some of my other work, I've installed, let's see how many at this point, almost a hundred raised gardens in my community and have never had any in my backyard. So I finally made some this year and- And some of them are at um, our church. Mm -hmm. um, and I got to go pick, it was really fun. I work at our free store at our church. We open once a week right now during COVID. And this week me and our, um, our pastor, and we have a homeless shelter too. So they get to utilize mm -hmm. the garden. So I picked some zucchini, some banana peppers, lettuce, cucumbers there's all kinds of things there's flowers so anyone who lives in that area which is a low income area can use those yeah it's so like it's really cool self-serve and we work with um an organization called urban greens through muskingum soil and water conservation district they helped plant it this year they actually did the planting this year i didn't have to even do anything they were in the area already and had some donated uh plants and seeds and um, hooked us up. So anyway, yeah, so we, I've worked with these gardens, but I've never had my own. So I finally have two and they're four by eight and they're 18, I think they're 18 inches tall. They are. And I've been filling them with uh, composted horse manure, which takes forever. Mm -hmm. Um, so that it's been, you know, composting over That's why months. she's so tan compared to me. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Cause she's been outside working. So, um, I've got almost one completely full and then i'll be working on the next one so cool. i probably won't be ready to plant anything until fall crops we can plant things like broccoli and kale and lettuce and very cool root vegetables so. i wish i had a green thumb i do not but um we did discover last week that in my bed in my front yard mm -hmm. there may be pumpkins growing mm -hmm. and it looks like weeds because it's taking over the entire left side of my house he's peeing on me um oh no it's okay it. um he it, or it's taking over the whole left side of my house like the bed up there but i think i'm gonna leave it because it'd be really cool to have some pumpkins if that's mm -hmm. what they are they're pumpkins they are pumpkins okay i have no clue <laughs> they look like pumpkins to me but i wasn't sure so yeah. just had to come in she's like I think you have pumpkins or squash in your yard so we'll see hopefully they turn out um so my second thing I have already um shown during my first episode but I've added some progress to it and I really like this project it's gonna be a long-term project because um it has so many cables but this is the Monstera by um Hohi Locatelli it came out I believe last month and I'm usually not knitting things when they're first coming out, but I really like this sweater. It's cute. Yeah, it's really pretty. It's oversized, um, and it looks really comfy. Mm -hmm. It'd be really nice for fall and winter. Um, and it's written out in chart form. So, um, but the chart, it looks really difficult, but it's way easier than it looks. And Hohe says that in a pattern. She says um, it's way easier than what you would expect it to be. So... Mm. Um, you can see where my progress keeper is down here. So it looks like I haven't done anything, but up here at the top, um, I've added more here. So what you do is you knit the top, this is the top back, and you then go to the front and you're gonna do two sides of the front. So, let me see. I think if there's a picture, yeah. So this is what the back looks like. It's really cool actually. So what you do is you're picking up stitches, which took me like four times, four or five times to get this right, but you're picking up stitches along this edge and then you're doing the pattern, you're continuing the pattern the other way. And then I'm gonna pick up this side too. And then once I have seven and a half inches, um, you join the body and you're just gonna work in the round. So it's a really fun construction. It takes a long time because it's so cabled, but I really, really want this sweater, so 
I got some work on that last night, or got to work on that last night, and um, that was the only, I worked on it late, or early in the morning, I should say. I stay up really late. What yarn did you use for that? So this is out of, thanks for asking, because mm -hmm. I would have forgot. Um, this is, let's see, where is it? Cascade Sport in the gray, um, light gray. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, I have some tags at home because I had to buy all, I have like several skeins of it. Um, it could be a number or it could be a color. I'm not sure because some hmm. some of the um, bigger companies just do numbers instead of actual color names. Mm -hmm. So that's a really. I can't see. It. Okay, you have to see this. Oh, I know. I think it's done. Did she? Oh, he stopped. You might see my again. So cute. Okay. So that's something that I've been working on and I've really been enjoying, and it's in my um, fat squirrel bag. Here it goes. I got this. Oh wait, here. Watch everybody. This is so cute. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute. Okay, go ahead. He is cute. Okay, so this is in my fat scroll bag. I got this last year. Um, and then I also have my um, shave them to save them pin. I'm a part of that um, little project that's going on. I haven't done a whole lot with it. But basically, it is a program to help save um, breeds of sheep that are really rare. So basically they're um, contacting farmers that have rare sheep breeds and they're um, seeing if they will sell their wool to spinners. Hmm. And so uh, there's just different type, like Shetland's included. Um, I forget, I forget what I, I spun um, a Jacob last year that I'm trying to figure out what to knit with. But then once you've knit something, you submit your photos. Once you've spun and knit something or woven something, you submit your photos and after like several projects, you get a prize. So, and it comes with a little passport with different, you put the stickers in from different vendors. It's just a really cool thing that they've been doing. So if you're interested, if you're a spinner, um, this is something really fun that's been going on for a couple years. Okay, um, let me keep going. I have, so I have, on my on my side of the family i have two nephews and a niece and my sister is um, fostering her right now and we're hoping that she'll get to stay in the family um and so i made her this really cute hat i absolutely love it, it has sparkles in it this isn't a finished object for this week i finished this like last month and i made it in one night and both yarns are sparkly i don't know if you, the That's pink really is hard to see mm -hmm. but it fits her perfectly i'm not sure how that worked out um and so she said she wanted, she got really excited. She really liked the hat and she wanted a scarf and um, some mittens to match. So I have enough yarn, I think, to at least, I'm just doing a garter scarf and it looks all crazy right now because it's not been blocked. But um, so this is the start of the scarf. Just really, I'm just knitting. So it doesn't really matter as long as it matches her cute little hat. So I wanted to show you guys that. It is made out of a really um, inexpensive yarn. It's called um, Encore Stars. And this is in the teal colorway. I love this color. This is my favorite. So, and then I think I'm going to make her mittens out of the pink. So that's... That would be really cute. Yeah, I'm so excited um, to get that done. Mm -hmm. So hopefully she's, she said she was, uh, she wanted to watch this. So hi, Myla. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You want to do something? Uh, what do I have next? Do you have anything that you're working on besides your gardens? You know, I still have, well, we talked about getting the rabbits done. I I spend most of my time cleaning up some kind of manure. And um, <laughs> so that's, I have a lot of work to do with that. So glamorous. It is glamorous. It is. My sisters will call me, what are you doing, Jess? I'm picking up manure. Um, the next, oh, you know what I am doing now? I'm waiting on my chickens to lay eggs. Oh, yeah. That's one thing. I We hatch chickens for school, and um, I've got three of them here so that I don't have, we don't have to spend any money on the eggs next year. Mm -hmm. They're just going to keep giving us more eggs to hatch. And so we've got two hens and a rooster, and um, they're getting close to being ready to lay eggs. So I just put their, um, the boxes in for them to do that. Cool. And um, the rooster starting to actually crow, which is really endearing. How old are they now? They were born about the same time as the rabbit, so February. About four months. They've still got a little. Not four months. Okay. No, April, not February. 
usually you have chickens when it's warmer so then you could take them outside gotcha yeah. i've never hatched chicks i mean that's generally it doesn't have to happen we've that raised way, but... chickens on our family farm we had we used to have a hundred chickens and they got kind of um eaten by mm -hmm. or killed by a predator in the area we're not really sure what it was um and then we were down to 30 and we had those for about a year and a half or so and mm -hmm. we got lots of eggs once you get that many chickens you don't really you can sell the eggs but half the time you can't sell them fast enough they're just making them so quickly they lay an egg every day right depends on the breed okay well our chickens laid eggs every day so we had lots of eggs yeah. so but so, they were, were really good so yep, i do miss eggs. i miss that I'm hoping we I do teach a food processing class or a food science class so we'll be able to use those in food science as well that's really cool handy Super yeah handy. that's nice mm -hmm. okay so I um I'm putting this as a work in progress um I hand dyed some yarn this week and um They're cool they are really fun and I'm I'm trying to learn how to dye yarn I'm not really good at it yet but I'm just starting out, so I figure... This is my favorite. Well, yeah, me too. When you first start something, you're not amazing at it. So I just thought I'd start dyeing my own yarn to use at home and see um, and progress that way. So um, this is Jess's favorite. This is a nice brown togel, tonal, togel, tonal or variegated. I guess it might be variegated. Um, and I use different types of browns and mix them together. My winding is not very good on this or my, I didn't make a very nice skein, but this is a fingering weight, non-superwash. I think I'm gonna try superwash next time just to see. I know um, usually superwash yarn has, makes for brighter colors. So I wanna try, I typically like to work with non-superwash, but I figured it'd be fun to dye a superwash as well. This, actually I'll show this first. Um, cool. Yeah, this is really fun too. This is purples and pinks. Actually, it was black. I used hmm. black and pink, I think, to get this. Huh. And this was the first one I did um, this week. It's kind and of like I tie love, dye. Yeah, I love the mm -hmm. way it turned out, actually. That's I cute. think it'll make a nice sock or shawl or something. So, mm -hmm. And then with the leftover dye from this, I made this. And I love this color, actually. It's This is a, and I, it has dog hair all over it. But, um, this is a true tonal, I guess. So there's darker spots. And I didn't expect it to turn out this way because the dye pot was basically just a regular dye bath. It was just a leftover from this. Hmm. But I got some darker spots and lighter spots. I was really excited about that. That's cool. So just trying new things. These are all fingering weight. This is a fun pink and brown that I like. I like that combination. And I got some, it looks like it got some little bits of gray in there too. Hmm. Um, I really like this one, brown and like a neon greenish yellow. It's that different. That fun. It is different. This one's really different. This one, I wasn't sure if I liked it, but I think I actually do. So it's got like maroon, gray, um, yellow. So this was, I think this will make a cool sock. So I'm going to make socks out of this. And then this, I, this is a DK weight. I did this a few weeks ago. This is just a neon orange, plain. That's yellow. Oh, yellow and yellow. not orange. It'll sorry. Dry balls. Yellow. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's really fun. I like how it turned out, and mm -hmm. it's got some darker spots and lighter spots too. So cool. that was just a really fun, I guess, break from. I was knitting like all the those two pairs of socks, and my hands were starting to hurt. So I figured um, I would do something a little bit different. So that was fun. Acquisitions. Um, I'm gonna talk about two different yarns that I got in the mail this week. I ordered a lot of stuff this week, which I shouldn't have done, but it's not here yet. So um, one thing that did come in the mail was the yarn I talked about earlier, which was the Wandering Wool Superwash that I used for my shawl. That came, um, as soon as it came, I started on my project. Um, this I ordered, this is a Madeline Tosh um, DK weight. It is Farm Twist in the light candy colorway. It's really pretty. I want to make a hat with this. So it's got little, I don't know if you can see the speckles. Yellow, some really pretty light pink. So um, yeah, this will make a really pretty hat. It's soft. Did I say it was super wash? 100% super wash merino. 225 Ooh. yards. It's pretty. So it is really pretty. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be I nice. Like it. 
you want to talk about your thing? And then I'll talk about my last sure. one. Sure. So I love this time of year because people have an abundance of food in their gardens. And I don't have a garden yet because I'm still filling mine with soil or manure. Um, so we were at my son's. Um, he's getting some tutoring from Mrs. Balo. She's a local teacher. She's super great. And mm -hmm. she shared some of her garden abundance with us today. So that's, that's my nice. acquisition. I think that's super great um, mm -hmm. when people are so generous with what they have. So yeah. I can't wait to turn that into a salad and maybe give it away, get it away from the rabbit because he's trying to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> um, my next thing is my favorite, um, my, my, one of my favorite yarns. I got three skeins of this. This is Rama Fennel Garn. Um, I got it from the Wooly Thistle. I've really wanted this color for a long time, but it was sold out. Um, they are having a, currently having a knit along for their vanilla sweater. Um, and it's made out of this yarn and basically all the colors of this, um, not just this color, but almost all colors are sold out. I did knit that sweater in a really pretty light blue, light teal color. Have you seen that sweater? It's just a basic like blue mm -hmm. sweat, greenish sweater. Mm -hmm. But I really wanted this color. So I finally ordered it, not for the sweater, but for a shawl. So I'm going to make the forest path hap Ooh, I like that see it? Name. yeah well that's pretty it's really pretty are there trees in that thing yeah it's a forest path oh cool and it's made um by nitography farm designs um so i'm really excited i bought this pattern a few weeks ago i believe um the woman who has who owns the woolly thistle just knit this i saw it on her instagram and I don't know if the fat squirrel knit this. I know she knit, she likes to knit haps, but I was really inspired by both of them to make something like that um, to wear this winter. So I think it'll be really pretty. I wonder if there's any, it's, it's a really long pattern, um, mm. but it's, it should be nicely written and it's, oh, I know why. Cause I, parts of it are charted, parts of it are written out. So it's really pretty. I'm so excited to make that. And this is um, Fennel Part 2. This is their new line. Um, it's Part 2, I believe, because it's um, dyed over, it's like an over dye over top of natural colored wool, so grays. So it makes this really cool look to it. So I'm hmm. super excited. It's like a yellow rust. It's really pretty. It is pretty. I'm so excited. So I think I'm going to start that tonight. I have to wait for my yarn to show up for, from, um, for the other shawl that I'm doing. And I'm waiting to see if I can, that's my last test knit that I'm working on right now. I'm like waiting for some new test knits to come. There's some socks that are, I want to test, but I haven't been approved yet. So we'll see if I get to test those. Um, but I want some more socks for the winter. So I'm making shawls, sweaters, socks, <laughs> basically everything right now. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to add. We are going on vacation this week, our family. So I'm going with Jess and Mary, our little sister, and then their families. Um, and so all the kids are going, we're going to, I've already mentioned this last week, but we're going to Lake Erie and there's a, uh, nice little, would you call it a beach? Yeah. Yeah. A beach, I guess a lake beach, mm -hmm. um, nearby. And it's just a small little town, I, I think, and a nice little house that we're going to be staying in. So yep. it's three days, I think. We'll be staying three nights. We'll be three there nights. Four days. So it's, it'll be a nice little getaway. And it's nice because with COVID, um, we were worried about going out of state. Yeah. So we're just going to stay in Ohio, away, try to stay away from people as much as we can. And now Ohio has a, a statewide mask mandate. So, um, we'll have to wear masks we everywhere. Wear masks. Yeah. So, but we fully support that. <laughs> I don't mind wearing a mask. Um, I have my B mask. I, I have like mask. six masks and mm -hmm. I ordered five of them are these masks that I ordered from this company on Facebook. Of course it was an ad and it, they're all really pretty floral patterns. So, um, I'm all set. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Um, another thing that was fun this week and that I've been doing lately, like I said, is working at our freak store at our church. Um, it's just donations. I should have brought something that I got this week, but I can show it another time. People just donate clothes, household items, socks, um, hats, um, shoes. I mean, basically you can find anything there. 
Um, it's a small little uh, shop that we have, but like I said, everything is free and everyone um, once a month can get a brand new item like toothpaste, shampoo, uh, deodorant, um, floss. I mean, there's all kinds of things, toilet paper. Um, so it's something nice that I enjoy doing right now. I got laid off from my job, so it's just something to keep me busy besides knitting. So, and I got to meet some really nice people this week. Um, we had some mangoes to give away. Just, just, it was really nice were to be. Were they actually mangoes or were they, uh, um, green peppers? What? Yeah. In our area, in our, in Appalachia, I'm not uh -huh. sure if this is true in all places, but in our area, green peppers, people call them mangoes. Really? Yep. No, they were really mangoes. It's a regional thing. That's nice to have actual mangoes. I know. It's really Those are I good. I can't believe they had mangoes at the free store. Mm -hmm. I guess they were giving them out at Christ's table or something. Mm -hmm. at, at a, anyway, it was like a local food bank or someone was giving them away. and they'd Or no, a church was. We just had excess. And they had extra. So yeah. people know like to bring food and clothing and stuff to our area, to our church. And then, like I said, we do have a... A homeless shelter that's attached to our church it's a really old building like how old would you say it is over 100 oh, years sure. oh absolutely it's old um but it's really charming and it's got some really cool um stained glass windows and then like on the side where there was it are they in the rooms where there used to be um sunday school or something what stained glass windows no 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 the the shelter no, the shelter is where the pastor used to live. Okay. He's, that's the parsonage. So it's the parsonage. Um, so I've been hanging out with some of those people as well and picking stuff out of the garden. and Just once a week, something to do. Hopefully I can find a job soon. <laughs> but the job market is not great right now. True. So we'll see. Um, anyway, I think that's all I have. Do you have anything else? No. Thanks for coming and hanging out at my place. Yeah. I appreciate it. It was fun. It was fun. Next time we'll have horses in the, in the background for you all to see. That'll be cool. That'll be really cool. Yeah. It yeah. was really fun. Yeah. So thanks for watching this week. Um, please subscribe if you would like to see more videos and hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Um, leave a comment. I'm having a giveaway right now for um, the socks. Let me see if I have the pattern here before before we end this. I'm having a giveaway for the s'mores on the campfire sock pattern. Um, it's comments from last week and this week that I'm gonna pick from. I'm gonna do a, um, just kind of list everybody in the order that they posted and then do a um, random number generator. I'm gonna eat my paper, yep. <laughs> um, it's okay, I'm done with this pattern, so you can eat it. Um, and the... <laughs> And the designer, Rye Flower Knits, <clears throat> was really nice, and she donated a pattern um, for when that comes out in September. So hmm. I'm pretty excited. So if you want this, please leave any comment that you'd like below. I will respond back um, if you have any questions or anything. I do read the comments, so that's always really nice to get feedback. Um, anyway, I think that's all I have for this week. Um, uh, we should be back next week. I don't know. We might do something either on vacation or when I get back. Hopefully I'll have some knitting done from vacay. I think you will. I think so too. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And oh, one last thing. My name, I don't think I mentioned this on Ravelry is Jendi, G-E-N-D-I-I. -I, and on um, Instagram, it's origin, O-R-I-J-E-N-N, Fiber Zville. And I will link that below as well with the show notes. All right. Thank you so much for watching and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.